Uh, thanks, Talat. I, uh, I'm here to bring uh, solidarity greetings from the Scottish Labour Party. We understand that we need to build unity between young and old, between trade unions and student unions, between black and white, because the fight that we have on our hands will only be won through unity. So we need to understand that we can't leave the battle against racism to the black and minority ethnic community. We cannot leave the battle against anti-Semitism to the Jewish community. And we cannot leave the battle against Islamophobia to the Muslim community. And in this fight against racism, and we have to be internationalist, and I say to you as well this afternoon, that we stand in solidarity with the people of the occupied territories of Gaza and the West Bank. I say to you as well that we stand in solidarity against any state visit by the 45th President of the United States of America. There is no room here for climate change deniers for misogynists and for racists. No state visit by Trump. Let me just finish by saying this. We should not just be asking for equality, we should be demanding equality. We need to organize in parliaments, but we need to organize on the streets of well, uh, as well. And our demand, our demand is not simply for a redistribution of wealth in society, although we demand that, it's for a fundamental redistribution of power in society. Let, remind, let me remind you of the letter that James Baldwin wrote to Angela Davis when she was incarcerated in jail in 1970. He said this, I want to build a mass movement against racism that resists all attempts to divide us. We need a movement that can give us strength when the far right is growing in numbers and confidence across the world. We need to stand up and we do that by organizing. And for those who think in this country that we live in a land where we're all Jock Tamsin's bands, it's a myth. We live in a system that still treats black people as though they are disposable. You only have to look at the death of a 33-year-old man, Sheku Bayo, a father of two who died in police custody on the streets of Kakadi on the 3rd of May 2015. Brought to the ground by up to six police officers, shackled, handcuffed, ankle cuffed, unable to breathe and dead in less than two minutes. Now the police federation over the last two weeks might have wanted to shout at Anas Sawar who's here today and tell him that institutional racism does not exist, but they should speak to the family of Sheku Bayo, who are still fighting for justice three years later. ...of today's march. I stand with the Palestinian people and condemn without condition the racist, barbaric, apartheid system of the State of Israel. And we flew our Palestinian flags with pride. We flew the Palestinian flag with pride on the city chambers. We show free, free Palestine because their struggle is our struggle. We march today because any form of racism isn't one community's problem. Only unity will drive out racism. We give strength to others and we use it for those who lose their lives, even if victims of war and famine manage to get to Great Britain, they will face hunger and homelessness, a toxic combination of inhumane laws and a public ignorance which breeds despair contempt and fear. Donald Trump's victory, the Brexit and the stakes have never been higher. Ordinary people across Europe have a course as... I asked the firefighters whether, the, we asked whether the firefighters could lead the demonstration as a show of solidarity and support with the Palestinian people. It's unfortunate, but there are reasons why they can't be here today. Not the misinformation that's been spread, but His Excellency Ambassador Manuel um, Hassi Hassan said this morning, reiterated the point that the Palestinian firefighters um, from the PCD are civil servants, and that is why they are not allowed to attend 
any political event when they are guests in a foreign country. Um, Central, on behalf of the Scottish National Party, warm welcome to Alison. Hi everybody! Thank you all so much for coming out today, even in the snow. Our welcome in Glasgow to refugees is the warmest welcome anywhere, despite the snow that we have today. And we should be very, very proud of that. I'm very proud of this city, and I'm proud of every single one of you. Because to us, it seems perfectly acceptable and normal to say that we welcome our fellow human beings. But we all know that that's not the case everywhere. And to reach out that hand and to make people welcome, to say wherever you have come from, you are part of our city, you are part of our country, and you belong here. It's really important and we must keep saying that. This week, we had a very important private members bill in the House of Commons, which seeks to reunite families, refugee families, because at the moment, if you're under 18, the, the UK government will not let you bring your families in. And I'm so proud of all the organisations, of Amnesty, of Save the Children, of Oxfam, of all the campaigners who wrote to me to tell me to be there yesterday. And that bill got through in the House of Commons, and I'm very proud about that. <laughs> home. People belong here. People belong to Glasgow. We have a government that doesn't look after people and we have a people crying out for help. I have people coming through my surgery every single week who the Home Office say can't stay and if it was up to me they would get to stay. We have people who have been demonised for making tiny little changes to their tax returns, who the government then say, because they did that, are a threat to national security. It's an absolute scandal. Because people will tell you that it's easy to get into this country. It's not easy to get into this. They are welcome here in our city. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alison. Our next speaker is also a, a fellow of Scottish Labour Party. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Namaste. Sashriyakal. Shalom. Welcome to the heart of the city of Glasgow. People of all colours, people of all faiths and none, all backgrounds, standing shoulder to shoulder in peace, solidarity and love to send a strong message to our fellow citizens in Glasgow, in Scotland, in the UK and the world to say no racism, to peace, to unity and to fight against discrimination and bias. In the heart of the city that has always welcomed refugees when there's new war in other parts of the world. A city that says no matter where you come from, where you are born, when you arrive here, you are an equal Glaswegian. I've got a simple message today and that's on unity. We need to be united against the terrorists and those that terrorise. So we send a strong message of solidarity. Solidarity with the Palestinian people. Solidarity with the Iraqi people. Solidarity with the Afghani people. Solidarity with the Syrian people. Solidarity with the Kashmiri people. And solidarity with anybody who is living in, in our institutions here at home. There are sexists in our institutions here at home. There are homophobes in our institutions here at home. There are Islamophobes in our institutions here at home. There are anti-Semites in our institutions here at home. But we can only challenge them if we stand together, united as one. So I say to the men that are here today, don't leave the fight for gender equality to women. It's a fight for all of us. Don't leave the fight against homophobia to the LGBT community. It's a fight for all of us. Don't leave the fight against racism to our ethnic minority communities. It's a fight for all of us. Don't leave the fight against anti-Semitism to the Jewish community. It's a fight for all of us. And don't leave the fight against Islamophobia to the Muslim community. It's a fight for an anti-racism march. 
and it's fantastic to see so many people here today in spite of the weather. We are living in challenging times with so many issues in our society with severe and sustained austerity which is ripping 